from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome, everyone, to the celebration of the daily TV Mass for Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season. And I'm Bishop Robert Casson, Auxiliary Bishop for the Central Region in the Archdiocese of Toronto. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by contributions from three donors. The first is from the Letourneau family from Campbellton, New Brunswick, for the health of the family, for the intentions of the Girard and Laterno families and friends, and for an end to the pandemic and for world peace. The second is from a parishioner of a Good Shepherd Parish in Blackburn Hamlet, Ontario, for the deceased members of the Andrews and Lalonde families. And the third is from John Donnelly from New City, New York, in support of the Daily Television Mass. Our thanks to the donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. With your Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether the Lord will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering to be presented to the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks. See you. 
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before people, in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, there is an aspect of Lenten spirituality that, in my mind, receives insufficient emphasis in preaching today. 
It is an old concept, but I think it is an extremely important one. Let me explain what I mean. The missing concept in the spiritual life has to do with making amends for sin, or you may call it doing atonement for sin, or repairing the damage to relationships caused by sin. Imagine for a moment, if you will, that you have had a major argument with someone whom you love. It may be husband or wife, son or daughter, mother or father, brother or sister, or anyone for that matter. And it has been, imagine, a particularly vicious argument. And you have, at first glance, seemingly won the argument because you have emotionally trounced the other person. And for a moment, hopefully not much more than that, you might feel good about yourself that you have won. However, what happens, or what tends to happen, is that you quickly feel, feel guilty. And uh, that is uh, because you know you have hurt another person. So, what do you do? Before you go to sleep that night, you may say a short prayer. Dear Jesus, I love you, but I know I have hurt someone I love. Please forgive me. Then you fall asleep. Is that sufficient? The answer, no, it isn't. It's a step in the right direction. The next thing you might do is that you would decide to take the sin to confession, particularly appointment during, uh, appropriate during the Lenten season. And you approach the priest and you confess that you have been extremely uncharitable towards a loved one. Then you delight in hearing the priest's words of absolution, I forgive you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You walk out of the reconciliation room feeling wonderful. Is that the end of the story? Once again, the answer is no, but you have certainly added an important step in the process of reconciliation. So what is missing? What is missing, of course, is making amends. You know that the relationship has been wounded. You have caused harm to yourself and uh, to the person with whom you are good. You need to rebuild the relationship, to strengthen it in love, and to regain the person's trust. In the spiritual life, it is not always possible to make one-on-one -on -one amends. For example, if you hold racist language, uh, racist attitudes, it may not be possible to approach people to make amends. But there are spiritual ways of making atonement. Prayer, almsgiving, and fasting are three ways in which we can do it. It is called repairing the damage in spiritual ways, making atonement. Sisters and brothers, during this Lenten season, may we be reminded of our call, indeed our duty, in the process of reconciliation as part of our conversion to make amends to repair the damage caused by our sins. The prayers of the faithful. Let us pray today for the whole church <clears throat> that this Lenten season may truly be a time of calling ourselves to ever deeper conversion. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that we may receive uh, the grace of courage to make amends for the damages we have brought about on account of our sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially for those seeking a deeper awareness of God in their life this Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. Lord.
Hear our petitions, God of love, that we lift up to you today through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the blessing and uh, virtual distribution of the ashes. Brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessings on these your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you, if possible, to cross your arms across your chest and in a virtual way to receive these ashes of repentance. Sisters and brothers, be reminded that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O God, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his creatures. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim thy death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and to Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, 
but on the faith of your church and to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace and joy. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.